but it works and wow I'm spacing on his name damn guy who played Django Fett um wow that's the guy who played Django Fett spacing on his name damn that sucks he does the voiceover, the narration between the levels, and honestly, that alone right there is, it's amazing. The story mode in this is just spectacular. You follow the 501st as they go from an elite clone trooper legion to Vader's fist. It starts off pretty much at the tail end of the Clone Wars, and you go through the Galactic. Uh, the Galactic Civil War. So they change some of the so some of the maps are a bit tweaked to fit new objectives. But I mean overall, pick up this game anyways. Story mode or not, hey, don't make them like these anymore. That's for sure. Republic Heroes, well, I had the Wii version as a kid. I remember enjoying it, but not really thinking much of it. It's a, of course, it's a TCW tie-in game, so play at your own risk. And if you're a completionist, get it. But if you just want to stick to the non-TCW stuff, then don't bother. Ah, a treat. The original Clone Wars micro series. Ah, I watched these all the time as a kid. Uh, you know, before TCW came out, this was the Clone Wars cartoon. The only Clone Wars cartoon, and... Well, what can I say that hasn't already been said about them? Watch them. Even if you're a new canon fan, watch these. Animation's great, voice acting, great. Connects to the EU perfectly as this was made, as this was a part of the multimedia project. And if you just want to see how good Star Wars cartoons can be, pick these up. I wish they would re-release it on Blu-ray, which would be really nice, but I doubt they're going to do that anytime soon. And if you want to see General Grievous be an actual badass a threat and make sense as to why stopping him would end the war, watch him. I mean, I blame more Revenge of the Sith for how Grievous's portrayal was in TCW, but come on. Pre-TCW, he was a frickin' badass. I don't know how many people have ever watched this, but the story of Star Wars. This pretty much tells the story of the original trilogy in, uh, in Episodes 1 and 2. Pretty much released before Revenge of the Sith, obviously. And the only way to get this on DVD, as far as I'm aware, was to pre-order it and or buy Revenge of the Sith on DVD at Walmart, which I guess my dad did. If you're a hardcore fan, I would just, I mean, I would buy it anyways, but it's really not necessary for anything, but I would say if you're ever planning on watching the films in order of release, I would definitely watch this before episode three as a nice recap and nice build up to the 
greatest Star Wars film of all time. Bite me. And in terms of other stuff that I don't own physical copies of, Battlefront Renegade Squadron for the PSP, while not as good as Battlefront 2, it's still pretty fun. It has a lot of maps, it has customization before the EA Battlefront did it. Actually, you know what, it, it just has more content than both EA Battlefronts, which is sad considering it was made on a handheld. But I'd say it's more notable for the story mode. The story itself is told in a flashback about an, an unknown squadron known as Renegade Squadron, and they pretty much, and what they were doing throughout the original trilogy. And instead of being made up of idealists and dreamers, they were made up of criminals and really terrible people who just hated the Empire. I'm not sure if we, if they've ever shown up in anything outside of the game. It's a fun game. The cutscenes are told in illustrated picture format with narration. So, I would say it's a step up from Battlefront 2, but... Not... The best, but you know what, the pit... But you know what, the images are really nice to look at, and... The story is nice and short, just... Seeing what others... How other squadrons, or seeing what other, the, t the different types of people who joined the Rebels. And moving on to the two Ewok films, which I also haven't seen in years. But from what I remember, <clears throat> I thought they were okay, but not, not really stuff I'd ever want to go back to again. But if you have kids, I'd say they're also a nice expansion of the universe. Also the droids and Ewok cartoons. The droids cartoon... Eh... That was enjoyable, but... Didn't really feel like Star Wars at points. Which, from what I hear, was intentional. But you know what, hearing Anthony Daniels as C-3PO is always nice, and... Again, just... Seeing this in the... Seeing it in the context of... This was released a little after Return of the Jedi, and... Pretty much when Star Wars was... Dying out... In the public conscience. And then we have the Ewok cartoon, which... I couldn't even get through the first episode. And this was when I was a kid. I don't know, I just... The moment I started hearing them talking and knew that this was going to be something geared towards a really younger, a really younger audience, I just couldn't. I'll have to go back to the both of them. But, again, watch them part of the universe. And lastly, I save the best for last. Ah, oh, man. TCW. Oh, boy. So as every EU fan should know, TCW really did a number on the universe. Left it in freaking shambles. Now, as I mentioned in a previous video, 
I grew up with DCW. Since my knowledge of the EU was very limited, I saw no problems. I freaking loved the show. I was getting new Star Wars every week. And also because I wasn't much of a reader, so... And the fact that I wanted to get into the EU, but seeing its vast size kind of scared me off. So for the longest time, this was my Star Wars. And then when it got cancelled, well, I was pissed. Really, really pissed. And then, when I saw Captain Fordo's first video, you know, before part two was released, then my feelings for TCW changed. I can still enjoy the show, just have to watch it in a vacuum, but what about you? Someone who wants to get into the EU, and, well, what should you do about TCW? Since it breaks the continuity to a heart-wrenching degree. Should you bother? I mean, it does get referenced in other EU works. Well, I would say no, because I just, because I view the show and its time material as secondary canon until we get an actual explanation. But what about the other references? Until we get new EU material and they make specific note that these events didn't happen. They were, oh, uh, in-universe hollow drama or propaganda piece. And then try and retcon all, well, the retcons that this put into the other EU works. I would say watch it, just so you understand where the various retcons came from, such as Darth Maul going from a full Zabrak to a zebrak dathomirian hybrid. You just gotta keep in mind that TCW wasn't made to fit into the EU continuity, it was made to be its own thing. So unfortunately, until we, until Lucasfilm decides to get their crap together, we're stuck in a mess. In short, watch it. Just <clears throat> don't think of it as a part of the EU. Just this outside force that wrecked the EU, and left an impact that can only be fixed if Lucasfilm decides to give us legends. Well, what do you all have to say? What EU works have you experienced? If we want to show Disney Lucasfilm that we want more legends, I would say the thing we have to start doing is showing them what we have, talking about what we have, what we recommend, getting more people on board with the EU. And then, hopefully, we'll get more legends. All right, that's all I got for you today. Tell me what you've had experience in. And see you soon.